Welcome back to CVM News at Noon. It's a special Hurricane Burial Edition, and we will be joined by several persons of interest to you and your families at home right now. We have joining us via Zoom the nation's health minister, Dr. Christopher Tufton, to give us a brief update on what's happening in the public health sector and the readiness of our hospitals. Dr. Tufton, are you with us? Yes, I am. Are you hearing me? Absolutely. Very clearly, too. Thanks for joining yes. us. We know these are trying times, but you've carved out some time for us. Uh, Dr. Tufton, what can you tell us about the state of readiness in the public health system? Well, our emergency response um, center has been activated for the past couple of days. I had a meeting with them a short while ago. I'm actually just doing a few little rounds now with some hospitals just checking with the management team. Uh, so far, uh, so good. We are prepared. They, we are discharging non-essential patients. Um, our occupancy level right now across the country is 80, 87 percent. Uh, so those non-essential patients are now being sent, sent home. Um, mm -hmm. We are prepared in terms of uh, generating capacity for electricity. Uh, we are prepared in terms of fresh water provisions food for patients and for staff. And the real challenge, of course, would be accident and emergency if persons have emergency situations that they have to deal with. And so the staff complementing those areas are being bolstered and preparations made to treat with those, as well as providing advisories out in the public domain around things like storing clean water, having adequate medication, and so on which are important advisories in for the immediate aftermath of the storm. So I would say that the team is ready. There is an emergency center that will monitor what is going on during the course of the storm and after, and will coordinate the logistics depending on where the major challenges are. Well, we know for a fact by now that Predictions are the south, the southeastern sections of the island will be among the worst affected. And so what is the preparation like for, for example, the CRH and those hospitals within that region? Similar to all the areas, I mean, we, 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 the, the emergency center is uh, at, uh, comprised of a coordinating team that involves the entire country so all the smos the ceos the the regional directors regional technical directors are a part of that the cornwall regional westmoreland where you have sub hospital all of those areas are also prepared and uh, for the eventuality of of whatever may occur after while still giving advice for persons to take precaution right we know you typically have a challenge with social patients those who their relatives have abandoned in the facilities is there an appeal this afternoon particularly for those family members to come and get their loved ones well we we, we have always been making appeals i'm not sure that it's going to make much of a difference especially now when people are fearful that they don't want to take an additional burden um, where we can move persons to infirmaries, we will, um, but that's almost an ongoing effort. Uh, we're not going to depend on that to be prepared. Uh, the easiest thing is to allow non-essential patients to go home with a particular regime, and that's what we've been doing to try and get the numbers down to allow ourselves to be more prepared just in case we need bed space. But certainly the accident and emergency are the most important now for any eventuality that may have been caused by this storm. All right. Well, Minister, before you go, do you have any advice for persons who may have asthmatic condition or they may encounter any medical emergencies and perhaps stuck because they are cut off for one reason or another? Well, the first thing is that you have to stock up on your medication. Um, the NHF is able to and has announced that it will provide medication even though you may not be due for that medication, because we have to think not just of the storm itself, but the immediate aftermath and some of the obstacles for movement after. So maybe for two, three days, it may be difficult. You may not have electricity, roads may be blocked and so on. So medication is essential. Um, the A&Es are going to be open. So to the extent that you can get to those points, then um, it will, you can move quickly to those A&Es, to the hospitals. They'll be prepared to do whatever is necessary. And uh, that plan, those plans are in place. 
Beyond that, I think it's important to have clean water stored up, bottled water or otherwise. You don't want to tr take drink water, um, running water of any kind after the storm because one of the problems hospitals have because of sick patients, gastroenteritis, that sort of thing tends to follow after a major storm. Um, so we would advise stocking up on water, stocking up on food that doesn't require refrigeration, and stocking up on your medication. And remain calm. I mean, it will pass, uh, and I believe we will make it through. I have no doubt. We just have to take the necessary precaution. And the hospital system is always there to provide support. Indeed. Have you been in dialogue with any of your colleagues in the Eastern Islands, other ministers of health in the Eastern Caribbean? Yes, I have. Um, and a number of them have had impact. I mean, Barbados, uh, Grenada, for example, and a few others. And uh, they are cleaning up. Uh, they have suffered some damage in Vincent and the Grenadines. Um, but they, the reports are still coming in. We have a chat group and we give support to each other. Uh, they have also expressed best wishes to us. Yes. Uh, so in the immediate aftermath of this storm, we will see where we are and to see if we can assist others also beyond helping our own people here in Jamaica. All right. Thank you so much and all the best to you and your team. Uh, that was Thanks. Health and Wellness Minister Dr.